We are entering a country which was long carefully sealed off from the rest of the world. A country living somewhere between modernity and deeply rooted traditions and beliefs. Saudi Arabia only opened up its gates to the rest of the world in late 2019. Until then it was nearly impossible to enter this desert state. Well and shortly after that the pandemic hit and the whole world shut down. So we're one of the first travelers entering this vast and beautiful country. We're Camilla Nanook and after high school we converted Dakar, our 4x4 Mitsubishi Pajero, into a camper. After five months of traveling, we're now leaving Jordan and entering the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. At the border we show our e-visa, have our fingerprints saved, go through customs and security and buy car insurance for three months. Uh, <laughs> Where, where are we going or what? what? At Abuk and then travelling further. And suddenly we're on the other side, driving broad Saudi highways. We set Google Maps to the first pin on our map, only to realize that it's more than 500 kilometers away. That's a thing that happens easily in this country. You totally underestimate distances. Saudi Arabia is six times the size of Germany, and we only slowly get used to this scale. With a few stops, we reach Al Ola, a place that is home to archaeological treasuries, natural beauties and magnificent monuments, many of which are over 200,000 years old. The region of Al Ola is going to be one of the touristic highlights of Saudi Arabia, with fancy restaurants, a renovated old town and beautiful places to visit all around. The first place we visit is the largest mirrored building on earth, the Maraya Concert Hall. Majestically positioned between the rough rocks of the Arabian desert, the mirrored cube reflects the sands, rocks and passing clouds. Maraya is known to be an architectural masterpiece that was only just completed in late 2019. It revolutionizes architectural ideas by being an attempt to build non-architecture. When you build something in a beautiful location, what do you do? You can't compete. So let's enhance the landscape, said Alberto, the development director of the Royal Commission for Al Ula. The word Maraya is Arabic for reflection, and that's what this building does. It reflects the beauty of the surroundings. We enjoy playing with the beautiful reflections and the special light coming from all sides. This place felt truly special. Generally, Al Ula isn't designed for travelers like us, traveling with a small budget and not needing luxury and fancy restaurants. The target audience seems to be the richer upper class, looking for a weekend escape. Our overnight stays aren't luxurious in this sense, but spending the day within this beautiful desert and seeing the sunset from our little home on four wheels is all we need to be happy at this point. We enjoy exploring the area all around Al Ula and enjoy the solitude and quietness. We also explore the oasis in which the city of Al Ola is built. There are loads of old clay houses all around. Big parts are fenced off and being restored at the moment. But there are still some spots that are very raw and beautiful to have a stroll around. While traveling Saudi, it's unmistakable what effort this country undertakes to open up as a tourist destination. The goal? Tourism as one of their new sources of income. Until now, oil accounts for 90% of the country's export earnings. But this extreme dependence on the black gold isn't future-proof. Unstable oil prices, a world moving away from fossil fuels and the simple fact that oil is a natural resource that will at some point be used up. 
In 2016, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman announced Saudi Vision 2013, a roadmap for the country over the next two decades that aims to diversify their economy by transforming Saudi into a global hub for trade and tourism that connects Africa, Asia and Europe. Since then, the country has been undertaking major shifts. Since 2018, Saudi women are allowed to get their driver's license. And a year later, Saudi Arabia lifted travel restrictions on women. They opened up for tourism visas. First international artists were allowed to play concerts. The first tax fees were imposed on citizens and huge projects like the line were launched. Al Ula feels very open due to it being a center for tourism. But after entering Saudi, we felt how different it is from Jordan, for example. And suddenly Nuki was the only woman not wearing an abaya and not being veiled. Children curiously staring in the supermarket, people overtaking us two times to check if there's really a woman driving the car wasn't unusual. Two Europeans traveling a country that was closed for so long. Saudi is drastically changing and it sometimes seemed as if the population couldn't quite keep up with this 180 degree turn away from isolation and conservative ideas. If you visit the region of al Ula, there's one place you should not miss. It's Hegra, the more unknown sister of Petra. Hegra was like Petra, chiseled into the rock by the Nabataeans and strategically well positioned along the ancient trading route. In comparison to Petra, Hegra isn't that overrun by tourists. So the day we visit Hagra, we take the official mandatory bus and hop from area to area. We visited Petra while traveling through Jordan a few weeks ago and it's truly interesting to observe the subtle differences. Hagra is a little younger than Petra and was built about 100 after Christ and therefore carries more Roman influence. The tombs are much more scattered around the area, so you can't freely stroll from tomb to tomb like in Petra but need to take the bus to cover the distances. While Petra is built in a narrow valley, Hagra was carved into freestanding rocks in the desert. A beautiful example of the freestanding tombs is the huge tomb of Lian son of Kusa, also called Lonely Castle because of its distant position from the other tombs. This 21 meter high freestanding rock is quite impressive. We slowly leave Al Ula, and again the landscape around us changes. The rocks and mountains in the desert start to become volcanic. We see beautiful white camels grazing in the surreal landscape. Before we know it, we're driving through thousand-year-old volcanic fields of the region Harat Kaiba. Sharp edge dirt tracks wind their way between these old giants. We lose phone reception and enjoy exploring white volcanoes, 
peering into deep craters and walking over black volcanic deserts. See you soon.